Hey YouTubers, I'm back with another photography video finally. Um, I thought I would do a video on my, uh, or a Hasselblad um, 500 series versus a Hasselblad uh, 2000 series. Um, the 2000 is a focal plane shutter as opposed to the um, uh, 500 series having an in-lens shutter. The 500 in the name, um, 500 CM in this case, stands for the highest shutter speed that the camera will shoot at or that the lens will shoot at. The 500 the second is just fine for studio use, but outdoors it can be pretty tricky. Um, if you want short depth of field, you need to get the lens aperture opened up. Um, you know, to uh, wider apertures, that is, smaller f-stop numbers. And if your top shutter speed is only a 500th of a second, it's difficult in bright light to um, to do that. Uh, say on an average uh, portrait I might like to do, I, I would maybe have the lens on f4 and find it impossible to get the right shutter speed. Maybe I would at f4 I would need a 2,000th of a second to actually shoot that. So that's pretty limiting on a 500 series camera. Now you can put on a filter on one of these called a neutral density filter and you can knock the light off coming into the lens. That's one approach but then you're looking through that filter. If it's a two-stop filter you're going to get a dim image. It's going to be harder to focus, etc. So you know, these cameras are still great cameras. Uh, it's just a trade-off there. So, uh, as I was doing uh, actually more portrait work outdoors um, due to the 100 Strangers project I'm involved in, it started really kind of bugging me that I was having to kind of fool around with uh, this low shutter speed limitation even though I do love these cameras. So I started thinking about getting a focal plane Hasselblad body. So what is a focal plane body? The idea is the shutter, rather than being in the lens, is in the body. I'm going to take this back off and when I do it you're going to hear a clunk. That's because this camera, which by the way is a, a 2000 FCW, the F is for focal plane, um, the W is for winder, you can put a winder on this camera, I have it, I've never put it on. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take the back off of this 2000 FCW you're going to notice something interesting. Did you hear that click? That's the shutter pulling out of the way. The reason they designed the camera, well let me back up for a second. On one of these cameras, on a 500 series, if I take the back off, you see those auxiliary shutters in there. And those are not shutters that do your exposure. These shutters are protect the film. If you have the camera wound and you take the lens off, you wouldn't want, and the dark slide out, you have exposed film and a, and a light path through the camera, you don't want that to happen, so these shutters keep light from coming in in that situation, but they're not part of the exposure other than to get out of the way of the uh, light path. So this guy, instead of those auxiliary shutters, where this space is here, that's a real shutter. So, uh, real shutter, I just mean like a normal shutter. So what I'm going to do is uh, get this shutter out where you can see it by taking an exposure and now you can see this is, probably can't see it all that well actually, um, there's now a cover over this blank spot, what used to be a blank spot. This is actually a titanium, very very thin titanium foil and it's very easily damaged. That's why they designed this particular model of Hasselblad to retract the shutter whenever you take a back off of it. It causes you to have to do some gyrations uh, when you put the back back on and I'll explain that in a moment too. One thing that should be said about these shutters is they're extremely, extremely delicate and um, they can be bent up pretty easily. You are never to touch them and if you do, you'll be sorry is the word. And I haven't done it and I don't intend to. This one is a little bit wrinkled. So um, I'm not sure if I can get it where you can see it. Yeah, this, one, this one's got a bit of wrinkling. And um, at least on this turn of the shutter, 
and that has led to some light leaks, at least I think that is the problem. I have backs that don't have light leaks because I've replaced the seals on them. Um, but this one, this body, no matter what back I have on it, it seems to have some leakage. If I keep it in bright sun with the uh, lens cap off, I've noticed some leakage around the edges. So now that I've shown you the, the shutter here, I guess I'll try uh, taking an exposure so you can see that work. Um, put it on a quarter of a second. And... Uh, So that's the story with that. Now the, the interesting thing is you've taken a shot, you take the back off, which you have to have the dark slide in to do. If you want to take the back off, again, there's that click as the shutter retracts, you put another back on it. Now the shutter is retracted, what do you do? You have to push the double exposure button and wind, which will get the shutter ready to fire again. So that's one little weird thing you got to remember when you're using one of these. Uh, I haven't been bitten by it yet. If you don't do it, you'll just waste a frame. That's all that happens. Um, that's one little oddity with these uh, focal plane bodies. So uh, having said all that, I think I'm going to turn the uh, video camera around and show some of the um, differences in workflow in use of uh, one of these cameras versus a 500 series.